Welcome to this next installment of the Creative Cart, where we're focusing on Predatron. Please give Darton Beck a warm welcome. He puts a huge amount of effort into these webisodes, if you like, but I really enjoy how he approaches the subject matter. I hope you take something away from this, particularly with some inspiration, with some content that you may uh, find inspiring. You may purchase from the store today. There's there are some bargains right now in his store, I've noticed, so check it out. We'll give you some shortcut links for those later. So, yeah, he lives in the UK and he comes from Cornwall. I'm not sure which town he's from, but he lives in the sort of the, the very southwest of the UK. And it, I just find it astonishing that he's been a... 3D content creator for so long, for 20 years. So that's quite some legacy. And there's so many products you can choose from. He's created another kind of ecosystem with low res content, which Daniel will be talking about later. There's a focus on that today as well. And I love how he got his the title of his PA name, his published artist name from Pred Predator and Tron, which is cool. And some of his inspiration comes from artists like John Howe, Boris uh, Vallejo, and from Tolkien. So he's, he certainly has got plenty of places to gain his inspiration from. And you can see how his work has evolved and changed over the years. And we're going we're gonna to walk through his content, some of his scenes, and dive into depth with what you can do with some of his content today, thanks to Daniel's study. Please visit uh, Daniel's website. There's a special page just set aside for Predatron on his website where he shares some of his thoughts about his content there. So don't forget to visit that. And there's a short link to Predatron's store, digitalartlive.com slash Predatron. And there's some current deals going on at the moment. So take a look at that. Okay. We are here to celebrate one of my favorite Daz 3D artists, Mr. Predatron. And one of the big focuses that we're going to tackle today is actually not his entire store because that would take years, I think. What we're going to focus on the most is utilizing poser legacy content in our modern iray situations so that you can feel more comfortable with taking amazing products like this even though they're a little deeper into the store and we can bring them into our current product projects this is a current scene right here but wearing uh, legacy armor and this is another current Predatron scene, wearing the heroin fantasy armor. And it's it, it can seem daunting to enjoy the idea of buying something that's been in the store for a long time if it has poser materials, because a lot of times it, we don't get that great of results when we try to bring them into iRay. So we're going to go over several different ways on how we can deal with that very nicely. And it, at, at the same time, we're going to highlight how incredibly valuable these products are. All Predatron products come loaded to the nines with all of different options that you may need to work with your scenes. And it's, it, they're a, a real joy to work with. It's very easy to take his more legacy products like this and bring them into Daz 3D because I believe that just the way he set his materials up for Poser is what they were, what the developers for Daz Studio were aiming for when they taught Daz Studio how to auto-convert 3DL, 3D Light, and Poser translate that in the into the Daz Studio experience. We've got this little 
roll going here. I'm going to switch to this one. And we are going to look at Predatron's amazing low res figures. That's where we're going to start off with. He got his start. He made this product, low res figures, modern males one through four, which he must have thought was a really good idea because he really took it a step further and developed Lorenzo Lorez and the female counterpart, Loretta Lorez. And just by looking at these images, we can see that there were a plethora of additional content that came out for these that are based on these Loretta and Lorenzo. And so the textures, a lot of the things that come with the base pack work perfectly well with these supplements. Let's take a quick little look at look, the Lorenzo Lorez package as you get all kinds of ethnic samples, you get all kinds of clothing, an awful lot of shapes and shaping and animation and posing dials as well as presets that are right in the library, lots of clothes. It's almost like you get a product and then all of a year's worth of supplements for that product, all within one product. This is all one product right here. And now there are some low res things that don't take Loretta or Lorenz shaders. And that would be the low res skeleton. But what a fantastic figure this is. They animates just as easily as Loretta and Lorenzo. Now let's take a little quick look at Loretta. A slightly different take on things. We don't get the orcs, goblins, and zombies, but we do get makeup options, hair, a bunch of expressions, clothing, and he's got the same ethnicity choices lots and lots of choices for setting up these are for background characters and they're so nicely designed that they can get right up close to a camera you wouldn't want to have them come close to a camera and then start ex doing minute expressions and stuff like that because that's where the low res starts to the fact that you, you can't make all of those subtle little shapes that you can get from a higher res but 20, 20 around 20 of those low res figures equal or are even under the polygons of one single high res figure these creatures are really cool they're very legacy but they they've never lost their charm and they all come with high and either low or medium resolution versions and then now we're getting into the newer ones like the giant fantasy snake here even comes as an eye and very easy to work with just by simply using the dials i did this entire animation just using the included dials and it comes with a decapitation system. So that's really neat. And that's one of his scenes in the background. So with that said, let's dig in and take a look at how we can work with these in our modern iRay situations. So this first one that I'm going to start off with is probably the more higher end I just want to show what's possible and we're not going to take it that far. I'm just going to show the method on how I do it because I think it's really fun for those who like to delve in this deep. And then immediately following that, I'll show some really simple and quick tricks that we can use that are much easier than this. But this is something that I think is very important to know. We start off by loading a character that has current IRA materials that we like. And I happen to like these materials, so we're going to use Rosie. And I'm just going to hide her. We're not, she's not going to be part of the scene. I'm just going to use her to help convert 
a, a poser content product into an iRay product. So here we have Lorenzo low res as he loads in his base form. And before we start turning him into an iRay figure, we're going to set up the, the materials from the poser library, how we like them. And because that's important, we need to get the texture maps that we want into our system before we start our conversion. We don't have to, but it makes it a lot easier because now they're right within reach within Daz Studio with just some quick shaping. I'm just building a quick little Dartanbeck figure of my of low res Dartanbeck. And after I was done with all of this, I actually gave him some Linde simulated long hair. So now I've selected, I control selected Rosie to get her in the shading tab because it, just for this simple thing, uh, grabbing one of the skin texture surfaces and I'm going to copy that. And now we're done with her. So I can just control select her again to get rid of that. And now I'm going to select all of the skin surfaces on Lorenzo low res here and I get thrown for a second because I keep an eye on this map over here and all of a sudden it it grays out like that meaning that not all of the maps are the same that's simply because I have this particular version for the head so it has a different head map so it's nothing to worry about now when I got to back up just a second here when I got to here I pasted but it didn't take that is because it's still a 3d light shader and you cannot paste eye ray shaders into a 3d light shader it's not hard to get around but it's something to be aware of so if you're constantly pasting if my thing doesn't work it does we just have to convert it to an eye ray shader first and we do that by using a shader preset that comes free with Daz Studio. It's under shader presets in the Daz library, iRay, and Daz Uber. And it'll be the very first one unless you've changed something on your system. And I, I put it on create a custom action so that I have it available here. So I don't always have to find it in my library every time. I can just keep working and then just go right to my scripts tab. And sure enough, right here, when we see these P, the word PBR and this metal, metallicity, roughness and all of this kind of thing. Now we know that we've got the iRay material shader set up just for what's selected. These are still 3D light in here. Okay, so now we can paste it in there and look what happens. The reason for that is we don't care about Rosie's textures on this guy. We, what we want is everything else. So now we select everything. And here's an important note where it's nice to hover over all of your image maps before you actually do this pasting so that you know what you're looking for. But we know that it's within these that start with P3D. And, and now we see that we grabbed just the head change because there's nothing else there. So we'll just grab a different one. I'll just put it on. Oh, we. so this is the, the, the correct one. And then you just put the head one in there. But now we still have more maps to change. So with the head selected, I go to everywhere where there's an image map and see like right here, this is a bump map. It's arms B. So now what I want is the bump map that Lorenzo loaded. Now I know what to search for. I go and see if I can find it before I find it. It should be. I, I beat myself. <laughs> and now this is a specular one. You can tell by the S. After a while, you get used to 
recognizing them just by the tone of the grayscale. And this is a Sol for Genesis 8 shader system that we're working with. So I know that there's going to be two specular and two bump maps for each of the different major portions. There's like arms, legs, torso, and head. With Lorenzo, however, it's all the same map. The only time that you change a map, everything else to the head, is if you're adding facial hair or um, hair on the top of the head. But so we're just basically just swapping out the textures here. And if this seems to be going a little too fast, don't worry about it. It's I'll get an article up that details this process a little better in this support page for this episode. And this is the, the thing that's really nice about doing it this way is that sometimes you run across a modern character that really looks good in eye ray. Sometimes it's due to the textures, but it's still not going to look that great if this stuff isn't all set up really nicely. We're going to see here that, as you can probably tell already, L Lorenzo's texture maps are more saturated in color than Saul's. In fact, most texture maps are more saturated than Saul's. Saul's are set up to work with a very high translucency. The skin maps are at, the skin materials are at 90%, 0.9 trans, translucency, which is very high. So if you wanted to keep the translucency like this, you would probably remove that, that color and just make it white, or you could desaturate the color and make an actual translucency map. But so is everybody catching on to this so far that all I did was paste shaders from another figure onto another figure and then put the proper maps back in place. And there's where he looks like in an eye ray. And like I said, his translucency is a little strong, but the, the shaders are fantastic. And here is where I decide that hair color on his face is too dark to be a Dartan Beck. So when you click on the image, it takes you right to the folder where you need to go. You might have to browse up a different folder for some products, not this one. So right here, I can see right now, just right on the fly, I can see the redhead. And so then I just put that in the translucency one too. So right there, I was showing that you hover over it and you, you can see what map it is. And if you click on it, it'll actually have a checkbox next to it in the list. So then you exit out of that and get back to your translucency color and pop it in there or whichever field you're looking at. So there is the beginning of low res Dartanbeck and he's going to have some long scraggly blonde hair and he's, we're going to have some fun with him in the very near future. So I'm saving him as a subset. When I fine tune all of the materials I will make material presets for him. And until that time, I'm saving him as a subset so I can just load him into any scene and work with him. Low res Dartanbeck, save. And I'll deselect Rosie and the render options so that every time I load him in, it doesn't bring Rosie and my eye ray settings right along with. Now we're going to look at some more easy breezy things, but one more, one more quick run through swapping textures from one character to another, but this is from one low res Predatron figure to another. So I'm going to load in Lorenzo low res first, and then I'm just going to hide him. There we go. And now I'm going to go to masked, low res masked hero and load him in. And there's a particular suit that masked, low res masked hero has that I really like for my sci fi starship crew. 
and that's this one. And I want to have all of the morphs available from, so I, 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 I'm selecting the suit, not any part of his body, just the suit. And then now I'm deleting the masked superhero because I don't need him anymore now that I have that in my clipboard. Now I'm selecting everything that is not part of his head. And since that was a 3D poser, the same shader, I didn't have to convert anything, just paste it right in there. And now, it, now that is really neat that Predatron made the suit the same UVs as Lorenzo Lorez to make everything perfectly compatible. So you could actually put body textures from Lorez on that suit if you wanted to. But yeah, that is remarkably neat. And to make it a little nicer, oh, here I want to demonstrate that this is 3D light right here. And I'll turn this environment intensity down and check this out you're going to notice that lorenzo lorez looks really pretty decent without even converting the textures so there's one little idea and we're going to get further into that because not all things come in like that a lot of legacy poser content will come in looking like it's made out of glass or something <clears throat> but so now i'm looking for the bulky morph not realizing it's the very first one and i'm just going to crank that up just a little bit just to make the suit give it a little more oomph so it's not quite like it's painted onto him and it turns out to be a, a really good move it looks great and look at that that's just 3dl we haven't even converted there anything yet that is really neat so now at this point with lorenzo you don't click on the major skin groups that you just use the ones for the head which is really neat when you're working with lorenzo usually you usually have to start with the the main one otherwise his hands are a different color and stuff and so what i did there is i just added a little bit of gray to the whites of his eyes to darken those up a little bit. And they're still a little bright. So what you would do is to lower the specularity or darken the specular highlight color that's in there right here, the specular color of the eyes, not the suit. This, this, this suit is perfect. So now a main uh, shader and it'll overwrite the suit so i'm creating a, mat a material preset for this so that if that happens i can just hit a preset and apply this again so i'm making under people predatron lorenzo low res materials and now i just made a new folder 3dl so i can save this version of it before i even convert it and then there it is and just deselect all of the things that are part of the head. That makes it the easiest. And that's why I highlighted everything over in the surfaces tab pane so that I have something to double check with. Now I'm going to use the IRA Uber base to convert it and look at how exactly the same it looks. It still looks the same, but now it's iRay. So we have all of these wonderful iRay options, but I'm, I just wanted to illustrate that because if you're just working on a quick and dirty scene and you just want to, you just need to get it done. You don't, you're not actually storing anything to your library at all. You could stay right in 3DL, the 3D light materials when they look this good. Again, I would tweak out the, see, now I can apply that alien skin that doesn't have just a head option. And then I go back to this. This is the preset that I just made. Voila. And that head is 3D light. And the suit is iRay. A 
a lot of the times when I work on shaders, I open the mouth so I can see what's going on. And he actually looks pretty good already. Just the, just that the 3d light, but now we add the Uber base and look at that. It's still the same. So that's why when it comes to legacy figures, these Predatron low res figures are quite the value. It's amazing how high of quality they are. So now I'm saving just a material preset just for this head. Alien skin one. And now I deselect anything that isn't the head. Accept. And now I have a material preset for that head. I don't have to keep bouncing back and forth. And so now if you catch what I'm doing here, I'm building a lot, my own library. And you don't have to do this, but if you go through the work to do something like this, and you think you might have to do it again, it really doesn't take up a whole lot of space on your computer to make, because actually it's all just basically a text file telling Daz Studio what to do. All of the content is already installed on your computer. But now we're looking at all of these different shapes that this thing has from halflings to elves, dwarves, different kinds of creatures, three different aliens, and then all of the different ethnicity morphs. But then aside from that, something that I don't have time to cover in this, if you click on face types there, there's a whole bunch of just names right there. You can see names above above alien up here. There's Roberto and Alberto and all these different proper names of people and they all have incredibly different faces and it's amazing how much you can mix and match to do this when i just i'm going to back up just so that i can just so i can show this i'm running a little fast because i have a lot to, that i want to cover but here i'm going to select the see i'm fuddling around here because i don't realize that that I'm looking for full body morphs, but I have the head selected. <laughs> so, yeah, I'm trying to dial in the whole dwarf and all I'm getting is the face. And, oh, look, I realized it. Okay, so now when I come in here, I'm going to, there's the goblin. And right there, you see what happens with the arms? That's these IK chains right here. You can either disable them, but I never use IK. So I select one, shift select the next, and hit delete. There, that's what that's all about. Okay, on with the thing. Dwarf, full body morph, turns him into an absolute dwarf. He's so cool. And then once you have your dwarf, like I was mentioning, there's, there's a whole bunch of different proper named character names in there that you can further tweak the face with you can make the beard longer you can give them hair and make the hair bigger and it's um, it's unbelievable how much you get out of this one this is just one product we're looking at right here except for the fact that i have the low res masked hero suit on but he comes with a, a plethora of clothing. So you really didn't have to, you really don't have to do that. I just wanted to show it off because it's a really neat suit for sci-fi scenes. And it really looks good on Lorenzo, who has infinite number of shaping and texturing possibilities. These textures all work on things like the masked low res hero, the, the low res monk, low res cardinal, all of the low. 14 MU workers. If you have Lorenzo, his textures will work on all of those, and Loretta's will work on all of the females. So here I am selecting head head surfaces and making sure that's all I have selected. And now I'm going to give them an Uber base and 
oh, here I'm just I'm basically just showing you where the the DAS Uber is again. The IRA Uber base, the DAS. Yeah, that thing really works good. And we'll hit another one pretty soon too. Now I'm deselecting things that I don't really think I want to add translucency to yet or possibly at all. And now I'm, I'm bringing up the translucency weight on all of these things. And you can tell it looks funny right away. And, and then I further deselected things that I don't want to have translucency color changing or I want to add a different color to them. And so now we see we're starting to see that orangey look because I immediately went for a color that was similar to what you'll see in Saul's surface materials. And now I'm just tweaking the color a little bit versus the translucency weight. And there's another trick that we can do to, to control translucency weight that we'll see in just a second here. Here, you can use the, the dual lobe specular weight if you really want to add some wetness. Otherwise, just cranking up this the glossy layered weight helps too. I just looked at the base color. And selecting all these things again. Okay, and now I'm going to go to translucency weight, and I'm going to put a specular map in there. It should be this one right here. Is that the one I click? Yes, good job, Dan. Okay, so now I select that, and instead of using the one just for the head, I'm going to grab that one that, that has the beard and the bald head and the whole body and everything like that on there. And when you crank it up, you see it gets too strong. And so you just tether that control down a little bit. And now that map is helping to control how trans, how much translucency is going where. And so you, you'll have higher translucency in the cheeks and ears and the tip of the nose and stuff than you will in the sunken part of the jaw, that kind of thing. But he's looking pretty dapper. And now we're going to take the dwarf away and go through some more shapes. We're not going to do too much of that. I don't want to bore anybody, but I, I felt odd not not showing, not demonstrating some of this stuff, especially if there's somebody who has never used it before. And it sounds like Kathleen's never heard of these things. But okay, now these are low-res textures on a low-res figure. They're not incredibly low textures. I think they're 2K. But look at the detail in there. And so in my promo, I, I, that's why I got some of those characters to get right up in the camera. They, are, they really look good. Especially when you play with the lighting. I, I haven't even touched the lighting. I'm just playing around. But this is an HDRI setting that I like. But if I were to render these guys, I would bring this highlight around a little bit more in here. And now here is the goblin shape with the goblin skin. And we're going to check out Riversoft Art Sickle Yields 3D Light to iRay Converter. I have to clear my last job. And you just click Scan. And here with the check boxes, are, and, and then you hit find matches and let it go. And the only thing that will ever show up in that list are materials that are 3D light. Otherwise, it won't show up in the list at all. Sometimes I like this better than the Daz Uber, and sometimes I like Daz Uber better. It really depends on the shaders. And 
the funny part about these guys is it doesn't seem to make a difference. So I'm going to save this as a preset. Goblin 1 skin, full body. But I'm just going to say full. And then I'm going to add a suffix to the end of it, R-S-Y, so that I know that this is the... Yeah, let's put a dash in there. So that I know that I it was how it was converted. And I didn't have to deselect anything. I'm saving the whole thing. Now I just undid it. Let's see how we got darker there. And now when we um and you don't have to select all of the shaders when you use the river soft art sickle yield, it'll find them for you. And so now I'm just saving the Daz Uber version without the RSSY suffix. And what you'll notice about what I just did is that when I ran the Daz Uber version, and now I'm doing one just for the head. When I ran the Daz Uber one, the material in the viewport didn't change in the slightest, unlike what happened with the RSSY one. So sometimes you want that change, sometimes you don't. And not all materials are going to not change when you run the Daz Uber either. That's just something that's really nice about what's going on with Loret with Lorenzo Lorez here. He's very easy to work with. Incredibly easy to work with, especially since there are so many presets that you can just click on. But then you get into the dials and wow, is it ever fun. And now to get them back to this, all I did was Control-Z or Control-Z a few times really quick with my keyboard. Look at this halfling. He's great. And it doesn't matter what ethnic background you give him. He looks great. You can give him a beard if you want. You can make him look younger. This is a That was a young look for him. This is a young, young face. Let's got the heavy body. We've got, let's back up. and So there's the halfling body without the halfling morph. And then this is when you dial halfling. It actually shrinks the whole figure way down, whereas the body does not. And here's the goblin. You can have the bo goblin body without the goblin scale or the goblin head. You can get really muscular. And it can look a little funky around the forearms. And if you really want all those muscles and you want to correct the funkiness around the forearm, all you have to do is add sub D to the character. And it clears that right up. That's just the fact that it's a very low res figure. He's cool, huh? Now we're making use of that material preset using a creature skin on an orc yeah the teen looks great and when you put him next to his parents you, you can tell he's a teen he looks like a teen and the toddler are really nice it's really cool how knee high they are to everybody else and then just a younger one just makes the body shapes a little more immature or a little less mature rather these textures, I keep going to this redhead. <laughs> See? <laughs> uh, I'm not sure why. Okay, now we're going to show off some how you can apply like beards and mustaches and hair and stuff. So hair one is short hair, but it stands up off the scalp a bit. And then hair two lifts it up quite a bit, makes it more poofy. Now you can use both of them together and make it a little bit even bigger, which is really nice. It adds a whole lot of variety without even having to add hair. And there's the mustache. We'll crank it off and crank it back on. And we've got a goatee which works great with the goatee textures, but it looks great with the bearded texture too. And you can also use these goatee, beard, and hair things as a, just a further shaping morph, even if they don't have hair on their face. It, it all just 
adds to the create the creative process of designing whether you're making a, a creature an alien Lorenzo's got you covered. Did you see how I did that? I'm going to back up so you can all see that again, just in case anybody's missed it. We're going figure, edit, figure, geometry, convert to sub D. And right here, when you click mesh resolution, now you can see that, that before you do that, there is no option other than base resolution. Resolution level can only change from base resolution using sub D. And that's what Daz Studio 4 was developed around. Genesis, the first generation of Genesis and Daz Studio 4.0 were developed together around each other. And they were taking advantage of, of the latest tech papers at the time of sub D cage modeling, which is fantastic. But that's another topic. I have to keep moving because we've got a lot to cover. Yeah, and now I went the same place, edit, figure, geometry. And this time I clicked add smoothing modifier. That's this mesh smoothing here. And I was just showing that you can do it to smooth things out, but you can get into trouble doing that too. Smoothing can mess up teeth and other things. It can be quite fiddly, but I just wanted to demonstrate it. And we're just about done with Lorenzo here. These, This is just a small example of some of the faces that I made without even going into the proper name shapes. And this is the wizard shape all by itself. It has its own beard. So that's a third beard Well, more than three. That's another beard option that we all have. <clears throat> now let's take a look at the low res animal bundle. And when you get the bundle, you get three spots in the figure category of poser. Now, I'm going to quick pause here. Now, I'm in my poser library here, and there may be Daz Studio installers for these. I worked in Carrera my whole time, and poser content loaded really well into Carrera. So we, we got very used to downloading and installing only the poser stuff and hiding the Daz Studio stuff. And coming from Carrera to Daz Studio, to me, using these techniques that I'm showing here really isn't a problem for me. It just doesn't... I, I think that Daz Studio, the developers at Daz 3D that work on this software, boy, they are really smart people to be able to pull this off because this is really good software. I know... People might string me up for saying that, but this really is good software. So what I'm doing here is I, I've decided that since these are all low res, I'm loading the entire low res animal bundle into the same scene at the same time. And we'll take a look at each one of them as we go. Yeah, so it comes with a unicorn <laughs> just just right out of the box. You don't have to buy the extra unicorn. Then this is the plain horse. This is the same horse, but with all of the riding gear on it that Rosie won't use. She rides bareback. Then we've got the low-res dog, the cat, the rat, pig and piglet, boar and boar piglet, the crow sitting on the horse's saddle. And then we've got the ravens, rooks, and crows in flock form. And those are static props, whereas the crow himself is a very articulate 
easy to animate figure. Now, I might as well wait until I render it because I'm setting up for a still image and now I'm going to do an eye ray render to show what it looks like straight out of the box. And this is more conducive to what we see in a lot of when you just load poser content into Daz Studio and run it in eye ray. It looks like it's uh, ceramic with a very high sheen a knickknack, which has its own charm, but that's not what people want. Now, a really fast way to deal with that, if you don't even want to convert a darn thing, select everything, go to surfaces, select everything, and just turn down the glossiness. Now let's turn on eye ray. Look at that. What a difference. Oh, I missed the prop crows. They're nested inside there. I better open those up. Oh, it's a lot of control shifting. I'll just speed warp through that. Takes as I didn't turn off eye ray, it takes a long time. Still takes a long time, even at speed warp. Okay, now I have to select everything in surfaces. So let's start at the top. Select the crow, go all the way to the bottom. Whew, that's a list. And where's my glossiness slider? There it is. And you don't have to slide it off. You don't have to turn. In real life, everything has some kind of glossiness to it, even if it's really flat. And same with specular strength. So in, in my experience, you're going to get a lot better of an eye ray conversion. If you are going to convert to eye ray, this render should show you that in a lot of cases, you don't really have to switch to eye ray, eye ray shaders if you don't want to. It in it, I am going to advise you to try to change your mind on that simply because eye ray shaders speak eye ray language, and when you're rendering these things, it'll do it, and it'll it, you can, and it can still look okay. But I have a feeling that eye ray is a lot more efficient if you're giving it its language. Besides, I really like the IRA shader system. Here, we're, I'm instead of instead of just using my little scripts up here, I wanted to show where we're getting Riversoft and Sickle Yields 3D to IRA because they've got a nice manual there and there it is. But he tells you to put it up there. So that's how I learned about this. Yeah. And so all of this stuff in here is are those are 3D light shaders. And they weren't even designed for 3D light. These were designed for Poser because I didn't install the Daz Studio CS or whatever. I think that's what they called it back then. I'll have to look and see if I have those hidden somewhere and install them. But I don't mind doing this. It, it really doesn't take any time. I, it's uh, especially if you're not. See now, this is this is one of the times when I will prefer the Daz 3D IRA Uber method over this converter, just because of this this added specularity that's a uh, specular highlight going on here. It might be, it's more finicky to deal with at this point than it is to deal with it before you convert. When I was showing you before where you just grab that glossiness slider and you don't have to turn it all the way down, you start playing with that glossiness slider to see where, where it looks really good and then work the specular slider and see that's how it looks and it's a little too specular for my taste and you're not going to get that all the time with the 3d light the eye ray converter it's a really good tool i don't want to put anybody off but in some situations and it's wonderful because you can undo and you can also undo daz one as well so it's nice having both and it's really neat that the free one, this Daz Uber, it's not free. They paid a lot of money for it, but we don't have to. But yeah, look at that. It, it turns out really nice. In fact, it turns out just the way I set it up with 
the glossiness and specular settings. So if I really tweaked it out before I did my conversion, I could get that even better. But that, that that's a good that's a good point. That's a good place to be right there for me. I'll take that. So now let's look at the pig. And you know what I'm going to do already, right? He's a pink pig. And I've been working with translucency. Yeah, we're going to make him translucent. He's a cute little fella. And he's so low res. These things look so good. Even better once you hit render. And if you want the camera to get closer to them and you don't want these little sharper edges here, add sub D to them and it'll just disappear. So now I'm going to add the pig's specular map to translucency. And there, I, I'm not seeing it. So I loaded in the bump map so that I can hit browse. And there it is, pig S. And now I'm... I'm noticing that map is really dark. And when you look at it, what it's doing, it, it, it's not for translucency, it's for specular highlights. I picked up that trick, putting the specular map in translucency weight from the sub dragon, which works really well. But when you look at this map, specular map for the pig, what it's doing is it's highlighting hairs on it, which is genius. Predatron really knows his stuff and he's an amazing artist. He's really good. And see what a little translucency can do? It softens things. It makes things, it helps things to look a little less stagnant. It's not a toy horse sitting on your nightstand it's a real horse ready to take you for a ride. And I wasn't working on the horse. I was looking, working on the pig. Look at that cat. He's cool. The rat looks really good too. Next guy I want to look at is this one. Talk about a massive. Now, if you don't get the animal bundle and you just get the dog bundle, you got a really, really good deal. This thing is packed. Look at this. Look at all the breeds you get and poses and the poses are really good. And, but that's not all you get. Look at that. That is so cool. Oh no, a little chihuahua. We got to look at him. <laughs> now check this out. Let's put a shader on him and now turn IRA back on. We just lost our conversion. See, see what I mean? It looks like he's China, a piece of porcelain, really polished. And, but, but, if I would have worked the specular down a little bit too, that would have made a big difference. You'll see, I'll do that in a little bit. You bring the specular slider down and you start to lose that bluish haze that we're picking up from my HDR. And, and you bring the color back out of the texture a bit. If you do that too much, it starts to look more like the fake doll that I was just referring to. Look at that thing. That would look cool if you wanted to put some stuff on the table. Yeah, look at that terrier. He's got his little black eye going on. <laughs> oh, man. This is really cool. And so while I'm demonstrating this stuff, I get to this little Jack Russell, and I start to get to some of the individual face morphs, and I accidentally make my dog. Uh, and I wasn't even trying to. It was just an accident. So I added a picture of my dog alongside. And I wasn't looking at the picture. I had to dig up the picture so that I could put it on this. And the dog wasn't in the room or anything. I just did it out of memory. But this product works so easy. I'm, all I'm doing is cranking on. Here's where I'm pulling that specular down. See how it brings that color out? You still have the blue. You don't want to lose. The blue is actually might not be blue in your scene. That's just my HDRI going on. And it's pink on this side. But you don't want to lose 
that sheen altogether, but you do want to have it under control. You don't want it to just look ghostly. So here's where I'm showing how you can mix and match and make it like a little wooden dog. Add a wood shader. You got a little wooden dog. We've got some great breed shapes in here. And mixing and matching those breed shapes can make the breed look even more like your own. Here's where I saw my dog. I cranked up those bat ears, and now I'm on a mission. Okay, I'm going to start with a Jack Russell <laughs> and give it some bat ears. Oh, now how do I get the ears to not be down? Dan, why are you looking in the tail and neck? Go up by the ears. There you go, buddy. Okay. Oh, too much. Nice. It's starting to look like Chicha. Okay. A little. Oh. Now get the color a little bit more right. I was looking for a pink nose. Chicha's got a pink nose, but I'm going to make a pink nose because this looks so much like her. It's just crazy. Look at that. That's my dog. Her nose is smaller. So I start looking for ways to work with that. And sure enough, I find stuff. There's a nose bigger. And you just crank that. The other. There's Chicha. That's my little girl. Spanish princess. Strawberry kangaroo. Yeah, and so I'm done. I'm done, and we're going to move on to the cat now. Chicha, buddy. Yeah, amazing package of stuff. This cat it doesn't come quite as loaded in that regard, but what a great product. This little guy... You've got the morphs for this guy are more like for fluffing him up or giving him a fluffier tail, you give him, turn him into a kitten, yeah, thicker fur. You can give it a big, bigger belly and make it pregnant. And you could dial both of them up to make a really big belly or really pregnant. And then there are these wonderful easy pose controls for the tail. And this is the kind of stuff you'll find in... I think any Predatron figure, all Predatron figures have wonderful pose dials on them. And for me, as an animator, that's what inspired me to create the system that eventually became the my dynamic character animation course at Digital Art Live. And speaking of textures, we are on the, the low-res horse here. This thing blew my mind. It, it's actually what got me to get the animal bundle, even though I wanted everything else so much that I waited until I could get the bundle before I got the horse. But this horse is fantastic. And, oh, yeah, the saddle, the bedroll, the bridle, all of that, it all comes, it comes right with it. I was going to say free, but it might as well be considered free because you don't pay a whole lot for this horse. And this horse is magnificent, as you're going to see. Oh, now the difficulty that I'm having now is I selected everything to turn the glossiness slider down. But when I ran the eye ray conversion on here, it converted the saddle and this all of the tack. I actually have to <laughs> select around it in here because by selecting the horse it's uh, it's got it all in there but it's not a big deal so now this is a neat thing because once you do select the ones that you want to control you can keep going back and forth and keep applying things and these will remain selected so that's really nice like i said daz daz studio is really nice software Because if nobody told Daz Studio that they wanted to behave that way, it wouldn't. It would kick off those selections every time you clicked on this kind of thing. Somebody actually took the time to make it so that your selections stick. That's nice. Look at these textures. The textures on all of these things are absolutely exquisite. So... 
that's why I'm taking all of this time, almost everything I'm talking about in this whole series is how to work with these shaders. Um, we'll get to some animation corner pretty soon, but with... I, I think it would be an absolute shame if if somebody who really needed a nice horse package like this that comes complete with a unicorn, all of these breeds, all this stuff, doesn't get that horse simply because it's not the latest and greatest. I got to say, it's, it's really good. Look at this crow. I, I, and it's really low res for early risers to the show i showed how i inverted the texture maps basically making them white instead of black right inside of daz studio and then i just started adding colors and translucency colors to turn it into a goldfinch or a canary or whatever that thing is <laughs> i don't think it's a real bird but it was it, i it only took me about four minutes right before while i was waiting for quarter to two to roll around my time okay now we've got rook morph raven morph raven head and you can crank up the raven and then still crank up the raven head to make it even different it almost makes it like a tropical bird kind of yeah I mean, all these different morphs some of them are just curling sections of feathers it's really cool and then we've got the three different texture options, black and black. <laughs> no, it's uh, it's raven, crow, and rook. And they're lovely. They're really nice, nice bird models, especially for how incredibly low res they are. Look at this. I'm working in IRA. I don't, I don't do that on my system. It just keeps right up. And with all this stuff in the scene. Well, with all this stuff in the scene, we have not yet reached a Genesis 1 model as far as polygon cone. Just turn the glossiness down. Don't want to turn it all the way off. I keep repeating myself. Yeah, yeah. So I turned this all inverted. You can just go image editor. And then it says invert, which has the button is, says off. You just click that button and switch it to on. And look at these. We've got the wings twist. And then it gets more, it gets better. We got just your wings bend. You expect this kind of stuff, but, but just watch. <laughs> now we've got wings S side. <laughs> which is really neat. Wings S bend. Look at what the shoulders are doing. Get a different view of this. Look at this, I'm gonna go slow. Pretty wings. Very nice. Very nice. Then we have the same thing in bend. Let's look at that. Oh, yeah. So, animator's delight here, but much more than that. How many times do you need a bird to have just the right pose in an image? You don't even have to take it into a modeler and mess with it. You can just use a dial. Yeah, and now the boar and the pig are the same. They're in the same package. It's, it's the low-res pig. And yeah, so you can mix and match these morphs and do whatever you want. This guy has tusks. They're just morphed away and yeah, they turned into a smaller tooth. These textures are absolutely gorgeous. Look at that. 
And I'm pretty sure that the specular maps aren't loaded on here. With the specular maps loaded, you'll get little highlights on these hairs once you get rid of the gloss. Look at that. And that's without actually even making cool shaders for it. And I, I like making cool shaders. It's fun. Yes, sometimes it can get frustrating and I might even give up for another try. That doesn't happen very often, but it does happen. And usually after calming down and coming back to it with a fresh mind, you find a way. So let's just back up and look at all these guys together now that we've played with their textures other than the flocks. They've been converted, but look at that nice family of, and there's Chicha standing there. Now we're going to look at something that blew my mind even more fairly recently. I saw at Daz 3D, <laughs> not the low-res horse too. Oh my goodness. So I, I deleted him because now... This is a bare bones horse. He doesn't even have a mouth inside, which is really handy if that's what you need. And then you can, I just showed, you can load all of the hairs separately, the long hairs, or all together. And the all together one also loads like your eyelashes, your nose hairs, the mouth. It's amazing what's not included on the bare bones horse if that's what you need. But Wait until I show you how low poly this incredibly detailed model is. Again, artistry. These are cool. These presets are for the long hair that you just loaded. So that's making them all white. That's making them all chestnut. This one's going to make them all black. And the, the default one is a combination. It's fantastic. And then you have individual controls as you move down. I gave him some bright blue eyes. You can turn the glossiness down right with a preset, or you can make it more glossy. And you can turn off, check out the normal maps. Look at the veins on here. You can turn them off, and it still looks fantastic. But yeah, I like them on. And I like the glossy back on, because that's a good... That's a beautiful, what a texture master. Oh, yeah. And see, now we can change the the, the color of just the, the hair around the chin. And all of this hair is done really well. And now I bought the bundle. Again, I saw it. I got all excited. I saw the bundle and I'm like, oh, my goodness, I have to get the bundle. The cart, yeah, that's for free because, yeah, just what the horse comes with in the bundle, that's worth a lot more than what I paid, that's for sure. Pretty soon I'm going to get down to the breeds. I think I've already shown a few. Yeah, look at this. It's just amazing how many different... You can tweak this thing so well, and it looks so real. And then you animate them. Uh, my low res horse anti blocks that I bought for the low res horse one work on this. It, they work just as well on this one. <laughs> there again, Predatron being, he loves us. He has to. Otherwise, why go through all this effort? He loves art, he's so good at it. Look at that. I love that. I knew a lot of horses as I grew up. I was really good friends with them. And there's a reason why my character, Rosie, doesn't use tack, is I didn't. I would put them on for other people. I would clean them. I'd clean the hooves. But when I rode my friends, I was basically just sitting on their back. And I held on right here with my thighs my thighs weren't doing the holding but they were it was the, my thigh muscles but it's mostly just the swaying of the hip that keeps you on the horse 
too much details, Dan, too much details. But look at that. You can completely change up all the, the textures on this. The poses are magnificent. Oh, you got to want to hug that guy, huh? Let's invert that. There we go. Yeah, use the mirror. I like these HDRI so much. I know which number to grab most of the time. I have a few favorites, but there's still a lot of them that in order to get what I want out of them, I have to explore. And now I'll just flop it around to the other side again and give this a spin. You get to know them so well, you even know around. Look at that. Look at the low res. That, that's the actual mesh of this horse and the manes and the fringe and the forelock and the tail. It's amazing. So here's Rosie hopping onto it. And I put D force onto the longer hair. But it's not such a great idea because it's so low res. And you can animate this stuff so well. And you don't even have to select the... Now, this is low res horse one that you've probably already seen. And I, I put this same motion on the low res horse too and it works great that first one that you saw was a gallop at in slow motion yeah here's that same trot but on low res horse two and then the hand changes that i do like a like dynamic character animation stuff that i did of course is different that's different every time no matter what you do you just can't help it that's the same thing again, but slow mo. And and that's it for animals. We're cruising right along because what we're gonna get into now is a little animation corner. It's my favorite topic. And what a better thing to use to this to for an animation corner than low res figures. So we're going to dig right in and we're going to work on a low res figure crowd, a walking, walking crowd. So here what I'm doing is I'm looking at the diffuse map, but what I really want is the bump map. So I, that's that trick that I was going to show that I was talking about before. If you, before you do any conversion, if you actually click on one of these maps, you can so easily find it and see exactly what it is because it's got a check mark on it and it's got this yellow highlight. So before you do your conversions, look at your maps so that you're not monkeying around like I was doing before. It's always different when you're doing a presentation. You, it's, it's for some reason it's not quite as fluid as when you're just working all by yourself but yeah what i'm doing here is i'm loading the bump map into the diffuse look at that what a nice little trick to change the color of a suit and then i turn the trousers brown <laughs> i'm a silly little guy but yeah and so now we're going to tech 3d oh right now we're we're still yeah i'm giving him a briefcase yeah, we're going to Bone Tech 3D's Local Motion Bundle 1, the Genesis ones. Genesis 2, Genesis and Genesis 2 Annie Blocks work really well with, with Lorette, Lorenzo and Loretta. There's some tweaking. That's, of course, not a big deal. So now, because of something I'm going to do a little bit later, like really soon i'm going to put my 30 frame buffer in there and we'll drag it out yeah that's good and so that's why i cut the the blending off of the beginning because we have to have a, an abrupt change there it's going to work weird but now we can go into these wonderful dials that predatron has always given us in all of his figures you get these wonderful dials 
that you can use to tweak things and it doesn't mess with what's in here because these aren't controlling those dials. These are controlling the joints themselves and so are his dials, but on a completely different level. And that's how we work with dynamic character animation. I'm doing the same thing with this guy. I, I threw an animation on the business suit. Now I've got a t-shirt in here and I'm going to do the same thing, give him an animation and then I'm going to hide him. This time we're going Reese or mocap with a simple walk. Don't worry about the fact that they're occupying the same space because we can fix that. And what I'm doing right now is really how I decided to create this whole system that's in my dynamic character animation one of my favorite parts of the course is teaching people how to create these sorts of dials for yourself on any figure. And it's really simple and fast to make the dials and you get such a benefit out of it that it's a benefit that I found because I've been a Predatron fan for, wow, 12 years? Has it been that long? Something like that. As soon as I got into this stuff, yeah, I, uh, I immediately, as soon as I, as soon as I caught wind of the troglodytes and the goblin, and then the angor came out. Man, I had to have those things. Giant fantasy spider, get out! <laughs> Gotta have it. Gotta have it. Okay, here's why I did the thirty frame buffer. We're gonna put Linde's boyfriend T onto Loretta and you notice I didn't select Loretta first I loaded the t-shirt into the scene and now it's just all by itself and so I'm shaping it just with the scale dials and I'm going to give it the texture now I'm using mesh grabber to finish off the shape change you don't want any poke through when you're doing a simulation if, you, if the simulation causes it, that's one thing. But if it's there before the simulation, you could just explode before you even start. And yeah, like I like to do, I like to show my mistakes. And one is coming up the first couple of trips. But I, it's nice. It's You get to... The stuff isn't free. If you want to simulate, you have to work for it. One thing see how i just baked to the timeline reason being for walking scenes the crowd walking scenes like this most of the time i just leave everything in anti block form so that i can switch them around and shoot another scene however d force simulation does not recognize that anything is moving if the motion is in the anti block you have to bake it otherwise you won't get a simulation it'll stay on your t pose or it'll stay on default pose throughout the entire simulation even though your character is moving it doesn't see it moving yeah see that i didn't want that so we fix it get rid of that and set all that stuff a little stiffer than i had i had it too wobbly and it's still too much poke through so I, upping the collision offset and I'm upping the iterations and I switched it to collide with the viewport mesh and now I'm going to <laughs> increase that resolution and wow there we go we got it now but it's just neat that's not conformed to her at all it's just parented to her you parent it right to the figure and then you run the simulation and but it has to be parented it doesn't have to be parented but it holds much better in saves and things like that if it is parented look at all these different options though you can give them dirty jeans sneakers casual shoes we're back to uh, bone tech 3d with another walk cycle it's nice to have a bit of a variety He's walking right through people. So you, have to, you just have to counter for that stuff. We're designing this whole thing. We just make it work. 
and with animate too uh, it's easy enough to do that so hide everybody bring in another one we're going to make this guy the star of the main focus of the whole thing like our james bond like character in the promo but he's not the same guy This is more of a man in black or something. Follow cam feet. Oh, what are we going to do? Imagine we're going to follow some feet. His feet. With his cool shoes. Those are some cool shoes. And they're all the same. These are the same shoes as these. It's all just clever texture work. So we select the right foot so that when we aim the camera, we're always aiming at the same thing. And you don't want to do it too often or it can really make your camera squirrely. In fact, I use a, a dull to rotate the camera. Otherwise, it doesn't just rotate in Y. It rotates in all of the axes. Now I'm dropping the characters down to the floor. And what I just did with this these ones that have to be baked... If you look under Properties, General, and Transforms of the actual figure before you get to Hip, it'll be loaded with keys in here that don't need to be there. They're not actually doing anything. But if you make a change in here where one of those keyframes, it, it, the other keyframe does have values in it. So that does make a difference. But since they're not doing anything, if you have to make a broad translation or any kind of a translation, rotation, or scale of whatever you're animating, select all of those, delete them with this button here, and now you're free to just drop the Y axis to the floor and, and that value will hold until you change it again. Unless you miss this keyframe down the road. <laughs> so while they're still in any block form, where you see these eyes here, those were baked. You bake one and you bake them all. So these came after. When you have the anti-blocks intact, you can adjust X, Y, and Z all you want here and it'll just work. Yeah, I, I am a huge fan of D-Force. In fact, that's what drove me to Carrara is the hair, Rosie's hair. And in order to use Rosie's hair, I had to learn how to use D-Force. And... Learning how to use that particular hair was a great place to start because Linde includes a lot of instructions, really good instructions and tips and advice and stuff like that. I take that stuff to heart and I read it and watch it and whatever they give me, I use it. So now we're going to give those guys, we rendered those out. We just saw the render. Now there was no scenery now we're putting the scenery in, but we're going to use the same people. So I just loaded in Polish's Cyberpunk Back Alley, the full preload that you get if you get the bundle. And then you don't have to do anything after that's just done. But I still have the same actors in here. So I made them all invisible except for the one that I'm working with. I'm going to change them, give them a different animation and include them in the background. You can do that with low res figures because by themselves, if you can have five or six or I think I've had six or seven of them in a scene at the same time. And they render like several frames in a minute. <laughs> it, they're really fast and, and they're fun to work with. But so you can 
put him in the scene. There's a downside to that. If your ground isn't an absolute flat plane, then actually working to make sure that the feet stay planted on the ground is really difficult. And you'll see that when I'm done with this one, my police are actually not touching the ground oversight. But so that's one of the reasons where movie magic really comes in is where we're doing what I did for this. You're rendering the characters separately and you're rendering the background separately. And then you put them together. And by doing that, the only foot contact that your characters have to make is with the iray floor. If they make contact with the iray floor, they will make contact with your ground, no matter how uneven it is, because it was rendered on top of the ground with a shadow and some kind of reflection. I, I always have some kind of reflection in there. But so this is a really nice set. If you'll notice, I use ambient moves by Reeser Molecap a lot. The, the collection just has a lot of really useful. This guy's just going to get up from crouching to walk and he's just going to get back down again. <laughs> and maybe he doesn't get back down again. But yeah, I use it twice in there. Oh, I use that. That's the crouching part. I just kept that to allow him to crouch a little longer before he stands up, I believe. And we're going to have her yelling at him. Not her. We're going to change her. We're going to make her yell at him, and then we're going to change her so she's not her anymore. See, there's some of those clothing options I'm talking about. You can... Right on this, you can make jeans or a jumpsuit. This is for add-ons that, that come with it, but you have to add those separately. It just adds more geometry. And yeah, the hoodie. We can completely change up the hoodie. Everything. Every little part about Lorenzo and Loretta can be completely changed with a click. And so you have a completely different group of people out of the same ones. And so what can be really beneficial is to set up a Lorenzo and a Loretta and get them saved into your library the way you like the shaders. And then every time you make new IRA shaders for them, save the materials for it, but really save your characters because then you can just swap out the clothing textures and stuff like that in a heartbeat. You can completely change them without having to do hardly anything. It's pretty neat. Yeah. Ambient moves again. We're going to add some calm pacing and then the cell phone pacing for these two police officers here. He's going to be talking to a radio. He doesn't even need the radio because he is doing as a low res guy should do. He's going to stay in the distance. And yeah, so once you have the animation in place, you use these dials to make the corrections. You can see that the forearms are bent back a little too far and the, the arms are a little too sticking out too far there's little things that go along and I made her I used a dial to make her look up she's actually that's what she's doing she's pacing and looking for something that went upward <laughs> and he's calling it in saying yeah we caught we followed the kid to this address but and here's how it looks rendered out this is the foot one I run it a, a couple of times here. So this is the people walking. And instead of just giving them a background to walk against, it's a background with her yelling at him. He's having a tough time. And the policemen are floating in the air. <laughs> Doing who knows what. But really neat. Isn't this cool architecture?
but it renders pretty smooth and it's got all this water <laughs> it's i love it and so then if you glue, glue it all together you can see that i have some foot slide in there and i think some of that may even be due to not deleting the ik on some of them I think something you get better results out of your anti-blocks if you get rid of those IK, but the IK are neat if that's the way you want to animate or pose, because then you can just grab a hand and drag it, and the body will counter that, and the feet, you can do the hands and feet. You can also grab the hip and move it without moving the, the feet. And then I went a little further. This is stuff that I that I did for this episode for the promo and just see that guy trips on the man cover and now he's limping and he didn't hurt his foot. And this is where the the little James Bond guy is actually superimposed right here. If I'm not mistaken, I'm gonna throw him in a second. Yeah, there's the James Bond guy. He's cool. <laughs> he's, a, he's a smooth character and I'm gonna, then I thought how does he I gotta animate him taking his glasses off before I can show him without his glasses <laughs> uh, another trick that I did in the the power of animate too a little clever use of tools and then here's Batman and some police officers and so those people in the Batman scene were rendered separately. There were like three or four of them in one render and three or four of them in another one. And Batman was rendered all by himself. And it's it gives you creative or artistic creativity to be able to blend them into scenes how you like. You you get the character render the way you like it. You get the background the way you like it. And then you get your other elements the way you like it. And this is a real reflection. I had Lorenzo animated walking up and I had her pupil dilate to to get him into there. And yeah, so that was gobs of fun. If I have just a few more minutes... I have a little bit more to animation corner. One of my rosy animations, let's just grab one here. Just one is 458 megabytes. And they get bigger. They get, I've got some that are, look at that, 792 megabytes is one, one file. And that's because I'm saving the animation of the hair now this rosie doesn't have that hair this is but to answer the question about baking let's let's grab a an anti block here i'm gonna come to one okay let's just go to okay so now she's got this anti block and she's just hanging there, right? Now, if I want to simulate that, I could just leave it like that. But if I want to simulate cloth or something on it, you see this gray area in here? You right-click on that, and you go Bake to Studio Keyframes. And it's going to say, Baking transfers information in Animate 2 to the DAZ Studio timeline. And it continues on. And the answer is either yes or eh, now nah, I'm going to leave it as an anti-block. But then it bakes it. And once you see this eye here, then you know that your animation is all right here. Now, I'm glad that I'm getting this question because I was just talking about this. Okay, with Animate 2, you have a problem if the body itself of the character has the translation and rotation information in it that will screw it up and it won't keep in, tr in track 
if I had more time, I'd show you an animate an idea of what that's about. Anyway, animate two requires that all of that takes place on the hip, and that's where Daz Studio wants it anyway. So, what I was saying earlier, all of this stuff, as long as it's not something other than in transforms, but it's always in, in my case, it's always been in transforms. Since that isn't doing anything, we can just delete it and it's not going to hurt the animation at all. And what that does for us is it makes it so that now we can, let's drop this back down. Now we can alter this all we want. And now if I undo that, and undo the fact that I, now if I did that here, watch what happens. See, those keyframes are unnecessary, but they're doing something. So we select them and we delete them. And now we can move things around and it doesn't wreck the animation. Now, in order to, have that not be an animation from there like this because now it's just going to jump oh that's because this is a constant we got to change that to linear and now you'll see your move but if you don't want that motion to take place just select this one go back to the beginning copy paste and then if you leave that there, there's going to be an interpolation be between them. So the efficient way to do it is to just delete that. And now we can still just do whatever we want. Put our, but this is our baked animation right here. And as you open up the hierarchy, you'll see more and more. And if you want to actually see what's happening, you select any one of the properties Oops, transforms, rotation, X rotate, and then you click this, and now you're in the graph editor. At which point you can alter things in that way. This is the X rotate, so that's really going to mess things up. Let's see, that's how graph editors work. Really cool stuff. And then we just undo a couple times. And we're good to go. Get out of the graph editor. I can't remember what they call it. Key editor? Key graph. Yeah. So then we can just... Oh, wrong thing. Yeah, I just alt clicked that to bring it back to zero. And now our animation is still intact. However, if you gum things up by doing what I was just doing, you can always just come and hit this little eyeball again. And now this has got control again. And a lot of times that will delete the keyframes in here. So to get it back again, you have to click in this gray zone Go bake to keyframes. Yes. Wait for the little eye to show up. Once the little eye shows up, you can go create anti-blocks from studio keyframes. It usually picks what it wants. Sometimes it'll pick this one. Sometimes I leave it wherever it is. If I want to include morphs, smiles, and blinks and stuff like that i would have to check this one but generally i you don't you just want the rotation and translation and you click done and it'll take a little bit and it's still locked out we're still actually in the time frame so to change that you click this i again and now we can get rid of the original one and let's try out our new keyframes our new anti-block see if it works and sure enough Works like a charm. Does it loop? Can we loop it? Sometimes they don't loop right. When you, when they get to the loop, they'll turn 90 degrees or 30, to, uh, 30 or 45 degrees. And so instead of looping them like that, you have to actually use 
two anti-blocks and use this thing to change the angle. See how it's changing the angle? Then you can change the speed. And you can re reverse it. So this is a, a pal of mine because I really like dragons. And when Predatron makes a dragon, he does a pretty cool job. And like Paul was saying, he's inspired by Tolkien. And so the Moorland dragon is definitely a take on Mordor. This is definitely a Tolkien worm going on here. And he's magnificent. I didn't get the low res version yet because I didn't really have a need to. But if I ever want to have a whole flock of these things flying around, I don't know. Because this kit comes with the high and the medium res. And I got the bundle. I get the, the high res and the low res bundle options too. Oh, high low and medium i don't have the i don't have the low res so i can't really use those maybe they'll work but but i have the high and the medium that came with this with just the main kit but look at all these textures that you get with the expansion this is the expansion we're looking at right here and it really adds a lot of detail and and really cool different colors for your dragon you can really tweak them out and then you've got all these wonderful dials moving the eyes around just looks so cool it looks real it looks like an alligator looking around or something like that they really look real you can open and close the nostrils you can it has a separate one for sniff there's the close the nostrils now you can sniff open the mouth and then with the mouth open if you got just three controls for the tongue, but with those three controls, you can really go a long ways. Using them in com combination with each other, you can really get expressive with this thing. And yeah, being able to smooth the jaw muscles can really, you can really add a lot of real character to this thing. If you're going to have it eat a troglodyte or, or just breathe fire or whatever it's going to do. It's Tolkien, so he's going to come down and he's going to bite a horse while somebody's riding it. Now, this is these these are those anti blocks that I was demonstrating in an earlier creative cart for the Millennium Sub Dragon, and they don't actually work per se on this beast, but it works a lot better than it should. <laughs> it shouldn't really work, but but. It's giving us motions. So I'm just going to show you how we can take this motion and these great dials. And you can see why I decided to make dials like this on my human figures. Because this makes animation so much easier to work with. You can load in some kind of a motion capture. And if it doesn't work quite right... You fix it. And if it has some really bad issues, but only in certain spots, you can bake to the timeline and delete that little spot and hand can't keyframe that part. But just having some kind of a base to start from makes a huge difference. So here I'm just using the wings and the neck controls to try to make this one work it's funny because in this particular anti-block it's the wings that aren't taking any of the animation information however when you when you load up the flight one <laughs> the wings are the star of the show so it's funny but with these dials make working with these wings really fun and the neck the moving the position of the head around just by by playing with these s bends and then and then finalizing it with the bend all or twist all and, and it's really um kind of surprising how easy it is to for this thing to to be able to get its mouth wherever you want it <laughs> it's got that long neck which seems like it would be a nightmare to animate, but 
thanks to the creative and just genius dials really makes it. And that goes for the troglodytes, the goblin, the angor, the demona cornuto, upland troll, all of them. They all, I've been a Predatron fan, a major Predatron fan all this time for good reason. He deserves praise. He's so good. He's so good to us. Look at that. He's, he's beautiful. And when these motions that I'm putting in here are purposeful, but then the, the animation inside this anti-block throw me for a little bit of a loop. So I have to counter it with, with some dials and the dials just take me there. It's so cool. So now I'm just clearing everything out. When you go right click on the t timeline tab over here and go clear all uh, the pose that doesn't clear out these morphs. I guess it might. I never use clear all. I always you do clear pose. But here's the flight cycle. And the one thing that really stands out on this one is that the legs are crossing each other. They're stuck through each other. And so I just looked around to see if there was something I could do. And wow, there's a legs flight thing. And then legs splay. And just those two tiles <laughs> fixed it. It's so funny. And then you can change how the, how the feet are grasping and how your toes are spread. And if you want to flatten the thighs or whatever, it's amazing how much detail you can put into your animations. And so then while he's flying, that's one thing about the flight cycle that that doesn't quite match with this dragon is what the head is doing. And that's nice in a way because it gives us a chance. It forces us to do our own animation just by some simple dials. And if it doesn't turn out right, you'll know when it's rendered. The ones that I rendered aren't quite right, but I think they show off the majesty of this cool dragon. And how simple it is, because they are just, I put them together just as quickly as what I'm doing here. Maybe even quicker, because there's a lot of content to do for these promos. It takes a long time. I'm rendering constantly. And um, so I animate quickly, I, and I do it with heart. I love it. Um, so there's a lot of love that goes into this shot. And... So I don't want to undermine what I'm doing, but I, I do it very rapidly. I spend very little time on it. And see, right there, it's going to come around again. The translucency is what allows that. You can see the sun right through the wing, even though the wing is solid. It's so cool. Now we're going to work on the textures. This is another one of those ceramic pieces that we bought at a shop we're going to put it on top of the piano oh look at that huh that was just the glossy slider yeah sure enough so that trick works on a lot of things not just these things but a, a lot of things and if we take the time to instead of just shutting it off do like i was just doing just add a little bit of glossiness but remove that sheen that was on there and just take a look around at stuff and then convert to, to IRA. You're going to get better IRA conversion results. Otherwise it, it'll read that you want it to be really glossy like that. And you may actually get that in your IRA shader. Is that clear? For, does that make sense that I word that funny? this would be a better thing to send to an iray converter than the way it was just loaded in otherwise if you just leave it the way it was it would probably end up really shiny but this guy's looking pretty darn cool as a now I, it's he's converted to iray and like always i'm gonna make him translucent i like having light pass through tissue it to me it it breathes life into something that otherwise 
has no life in it. You need the blood th- flowing through the veins, pumping the muscles, and the translucency helps to at least signify that in some way. Very few things in life, if any, are truly opaque. Mm. So here, I'm looking for the maps. I'm looking to see if there's a specular map loaded in here somewhere. I'm pretty sure that this one comes with a specular map. Sure enough, there's. I see it at the bottom there, M Dragon S. That's a specular map. So I know I can load that into something. Base bump. Dan, look down. It's right there. It's weird when you're doing this stuff. Yeah, see, I'm going to load the bump, and then I'm going to load the... Then I'm going to browse for the specular map. (laughs) That's funny. So I just um, showed myself that the texture map was the one that ends in the word brown. Wow, it looks cool with that bump map in the translucency weight. Perhaps I tried the trans the specular map and I didn't like it. So what you, when you see me messing around like this, where I'm it seems like I'm taking forever. It's because I'm I'm keeping an eye over here for these maps to change. As soon as I see one of those maps change like that, then I deselect it again. And and then I'm also just trying to I'm questioning myself as to whether what I'm selecting really should be selected. And so I'm looking at what I want to do. I'm going to add the, see? So I, that's what I did with the specular map. I did see the specular map, but I didn't want it for translucency. I wanted it for, no, I didn't want it for glossy. I did want it for glossy roughness, but I changed my mind and got rid of it. I thought it looked pretty cool. Just had to be turned down a bit. There, I put it back in. Oh, he's looking pretty cool. That bump map really looks nice. So as I work these things, eventually I'm going to want a creature like this sometimes to have a little bit of gloss to it to give those scales a shine. But looking at the bump on here, it's reminding me more of elephant skin than of a shiny snake scale wanting to keep away from it being too shiny is my aim because if you look right in here to me that is some precious detail it really and everywhere actually but right in here with this particular lighting we're really catching something special that adding gloss to that giving this a wet look might almost feel like a crime but that wouldn't stop me from trying it so deliberate decisions here i'm selecting the teeth and i'm making them a little more like a old bone idea feel and so I'm gonna work that in now I'm actually I just took the texture map of the eye and I put it in the emission slot the emission color and now I made it so that it's seen lighting only so we could indeed see that the eye was glowing and then I opted to not make it brighter so that it 
it stays more subdued. But now if he goes into a cave, his eyes will be glowing. Or her eyes. Whoever. But now, as I make these little tweaks in here, it's making big differences. And see, when I'm dialing on that dual lobe specular, that is me adding some shine to it. And if you don't see it getting really glossy, that's because I'm making uh, very special, small adjustments, being very subtle and using values in the roughness of that particular effect uh, to minimize the spread of it. Now watch as his wings pass the sun. And you'll see why I'm loving this, why I really like translucency on dragons, especially. See that? And yeah, you can tell that's a real dragon, except I still need to work on my dragon anim animation process, but that'll come because I love it so much.